Everyone thinks that being a professional footballer is a gateway to financial freedom for life. Well, while that might be true, there are some footballers that went completely broke after making it big. Let's look at 10 of them. Starting at number 10, we have Chikelu Ilwe Yossi, who was not the most popular name and a fringe player for the Super Eagles, who achieved little with the senior national team. He however made a career playing football and quite a profitable one. He was part of the national under 20 sides that featured in the World Cup Youth Championship in Nigeria in 1999. He also won four caps with the Super Eagles. He is famous for his marriage to Nollywood actress Stephanie Okereke that was annulled by a Lagos court after it was discovered that he was legally married to another woman in the United States at the time he took Stephanie to the altar. However, despite featuring an any big salary for various clubs across the globe from Turkey to Libya to Australia and Saudi Arabia, Ilo Yossi was not doing well financially after he retired. At number 9, we have Mohamed Yusuf and he also wasn't the most popular name but he was a regular in the Nigerian team. The former Ayimba or Abad defender enjoyed a starting 11 position in the Super Eagles during 2008 to 2011 and he blossomed in the full back position with his incredible defensive and offensive talent. After Ayimba, he played for Al Hilal of Sudan and then he moved to Switzerland before returning back to Sudan. However, the PC defender suffered a serious injury in the 2010 African Nations Cup and his career was never the same. There are some reports that Yusuf is currently based in Kanu and he is very broke as he has been abandoned by the authorities and the Nigerian Football Federation. Next up at number 8, we have Will Sinoruma, who captained Nigeria on the 17 team to win the 1993 World Cup in Japan. He was part of Nigeria team that featured the likes of JJ Okosha, Sunday Ulisse, Wankwa Kanu, Celestine Babayaro and amongst others. He spent most of his career in France as he played for RC Lens, Marcel and clubs in Switzerland and Kavala FC in Greece and he made millions in the round leather game. Though again, Gifted player, Oroma lived in the shadow of Austin JJ Okosha in the Super Eagles and was used each time JJ Okosha was out injured or not eligible for matches. He has a Nigerian as well as a French nationality and made millions playing. But the former Super Eagles midfielders for 6 years had mental disorder after being defrauded heavily by a Lagos based pastor and some fake oil businessmen. He's presently said to have regained mental stability and was offered a role in the Nigerian Football Federation before the Russia 2018 FIFA. World Cup. Every support you'll be giving to me, much love you showed to me and my family. We are heavy and sang. Thank you so much. I never knew people love me so much like that. <laughs> I appreciate and I celebrate you all. Thank you so much. But then see, I'm well and healthy, good. You no, know, I'm looking so cute. <laughs> yeah. And today is 2nd of May. Should play, play this video today just to tell everyone that I'm good and so much love from them. I appreciate them so much. One love to Ninja. Next stop on our list wouldn't be complete without Etim Esim. He was so good during his days, he was nicknamed Maradona and people agreed that even JJ Okosha with all his skills was no match for Etim. He was clearly one of the richest African players in his active days before he ran into trouble in Belgium. Etim Esim was on to play in Belgium for a number of teams, most notably Lucarin and Lassin, but his hot-headedness and poor attitude made him get into a lot of trouble which affected even his international career. Apart from minor spats with his coaches, he got into major trouble in the 1990s when he was accused of raping and impregnating a white girl in Belgium. The case was followed that the grave accusation shoved his career into a free fall and even his enormous talent could not halt the slide. He escaped from Belgium and insisted on his innocence, although he was eventually vindicated when the white girl gave birth to a baby with no trace of black blood. The stigma never went away. His once promising career crumbled and the accusation of a crime as heinous as rape proved too heavy for Essin to recover from. He was willing to have driven two customized cars built to his taste. On visits to Nigeria from his club in Europe, he retained a permanent suit at the Sheraton Hotel Ikeja. But he went bankrupt. One of his customized BMW cars was seized by the hotel as he was unable to pay bills. Later on, he went around national team camps moving from one room to the other after Super Eagles matches allegedly requesting for financial assistance from his colleagues. Fortunately, 
the Nigerian Football Federation came to his aid some time back. At number 6, we have Ifine Udeze, another explosive Super Eagles left back who was a key member of the national team between 2000 and 2004 after graduating from the victorious Golden Eaglet. Sadly, Fortune took a downward turn for the player as he was neck deep in debt after squandering the substantial fortune he gained during his playing days on high stake gambling and other luxuries. Udeze will be shot for AEK Athens, Park FC in Greece and West Brom in England while active was also said to have a particular preference for locally manufactured gin and was also seen indulging in street gambling with some undesirable elements around the neighborhood he grew up in Ajegule. Although he dusted himself and became a pundit and started earning some money. So if you are enjoying the video kindly hit the subscribe button and like. Into the top 5 now we have Taribo West. He has the guy with the weirdest hairstyle ever in football. Taribo is perhaps the most successful Nigerian central back in history. At the height of his career, he was regarded as one of the best defenders in Europe and was a key member of the Inter Milan squad between 1997 and 1999. He was also part of the victorious Olympic gold winning dream team side in 1996. When Taribo got to Auxerre in France, he was said to have told his coach to sack whoever is playing his position that he has arrived. It was that singular act of confidence that reportedly earned him the contract. Despite featuring for top sides in Europe such as AC Milan, Derby County, Partizan, Belgrade and a brief spell in the Middle East with Qatari side Al Arabi Doha. Taribo was said to be in financial deep waters as the millions he made during his playing days vanished. He also made a bad investment in his marriage but now can be seen in Lagos trying his hands in winning souls for God as a pastor, a vocation he undertook towards the end of his career. The only noticeable property left for Taribo is his huge mansion in Lagos. At number 4, we had Victor Agali, and at a time, he formed a formidable striking partnership with Wankwa Kanu, which was fondly dubbed the Twin Towers. The tall and lanky forward was particularly loved by Super Ego fans due to his proficiency in aerial duels. His tall physique and his imposing stature saw him lace his boots for top European sides such as Olympic Marcel, Hansa Rostock, Chaka 04, and Nice. However, sources revealed that the player was not doing well financially after he retired. Tired. Apparently, despite earning an average pay of 25,000 euros per month while in Germany, some failed investments and a clearly lavish lifestyle saw him scrapping financially. He will sold some of his assets to survive. But fortunately, the bad period didn't last long for Agali as he got more involved in Nigerian football. At number 3, we have Femi Opabumi, who is remembered for being a key player at 2001 FIFA Under 20 World Championship, where he scored a hat trick against Australia and won himself the silver shoe as second highest goal scorer and also the bronze ball as third best player in the tournament. Helping Nigerian to reach the final, we had a loss to France. His story is a real grave to grass story. Opabumi played for Nigeria and made his debut in 2002 and was a participant at the 2002 FIFA World Cup and became the third youngest player to ever play in the World Cup finals after Norman Whiteside and Samuel Eto at the time. He played for a few clubs including Shooting Stars FC, Grasshopper Zurich in Switzerland and knew it in France. He retired from the game after he had a defect in one of his eyes during his football career. He was later based in Ibadan in the southwest region of the country. It is said that Opabumi survived his last month in Europe through the assistance of former teammate Peter Osaze Odewingi. At number two, and most surprisingly, we have Rashidi Yakini, a former Nigerian striker. Yakini played in five major tournaments for Nigeria, scoring 37 goals. In 1993, he became the first Nigerian to win the CAF Africa. African Footballer of the Year award and was also the highest goal scorer in the 1992 African Cup of Nations. He's also all time top goal scorer for his nation. During his illustrious professional career, which spanned over two decades, Yakini was primarily associated with Victoria da Setubal in Portugal. However, his talent and passion for the game took him to six other countries besides his native Nigeria. He scored an impressive 37 goals as a Nigerian international footballer and represented his nation in seven tournaments. Notably, he played in FIFA World Cups where he put his name in history by scoring Nigerians first goal in the competition. However, despite his professional success, Yekini faced significant challenges in his personal life. He battled depression and bipolar disorder which took a toll on his well-being. In 2012, at the age of 48, Yekini tragically passed away in poverty. Some attributed Yekini's plight to the failure of the Kwara state government to fulfill his commitments to him, adding to the tragedy of his untimely death. Finally, at number one, we have Celestine.
this thing Babayaro, who was unarguably the best culture Super Egos left bar and featured for Nigeria at various age category and Super Egos winning the 1996 Olympics for the country. Babayaro played some of the biggest clubs in England and Belgium. At the time in his career, Babayaro was among the highest paid African players in the world as he earned between 25,000 to 30,000 pounds per week at Chelsea FC of England. He however declared himself bankrupt at a court in Croydon in 2010 after being charged by creditors. A final confirmation of his insolvency was made known in 2011. The former Anderlecht and Newcastle United defender was reported to have lived an expensive lifestyle both in Nigeria and England. So it's abound on how he blew thousands of pounds and buying exotic items and also parted hard with women. Babayaro's financial trouble became apparent to his neighbors with one saying that his usually beautifully kept house began to look a bit unkept and they knew things were wrong. So if you enjoyed the video kindly click on the subscribe button and like then click on the end screen on your left to watch the top 10 richest footballers in Nigeria.